Let me call to order the City Council meeting uh, of Tuesday, June 23rd uh, at 7.30 p.m. Um, before we rise for invocation, I just want to uh, take a moment of silence uh, to remember Tuck Frazier, uh, who passed this week, and, and his uh, both place in the history of Williamsport and his long service uh, to the city and, and the surrounding area. Thank you. Please rise. Summer is here, schools are at, and graduations are over. For all of our grammar school kids, Lord, we ask you to look after them as they enjoy their summer. We hope to keep them physically and mentally active, and for their parents, the strength to endure the summer mantra of, I'm bored. For our high school grads, we wish them luck on whatever path they have chosen, be it college or out in the world working. And for their parents, know they will be testing their wings, but have confidence that you have done a good job parenting, and they will be great young men and women. For our college grads, our future is in your hands. We are excited to see what great and new accomplishments you will bring back to us and make our world even better. And for their parents, be proud and encourage their successes because you already have plans for their bedroom. And with this circle of life, we ask you, Lord, protect and guide our youth, our greatest assets. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Uh, and thank you for that. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, approval of City Council meeting minutes uh, dated June the 9th, 2016. Can I have a motion and a second to approve those? Second. second. Hearing motion and second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, Ms. Frank on the mic. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Uh, yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williams. Yes. Uh, and those uh, minutes are approved. Next item is uh, limited courtesy of the floor. We've had no requests this evening. Um, so we can move on to the next item, uh, which is a brief presentation uh, by Jerry Walls of the Susquehanna Greenway Rivertown program. Mr. Walls, how are you? Uh, and I think Mr. Grado is also going to join him. Uh, it, I probably should have let Mr. Grado provide the introduction and then... Uh, well, actually, Jerry needs no introduction, I guess. So. <laughs> but just, uh, just a few True. comments um, that um, council has before them. Uh, and this is a presentation on a river, Susquehanna Greenway Rivertown uh, designation. You've received a, a resolution. And, and act, we're, we're going to be coming back uh, to council at the next council meeting uh, to ask uh, you know, for this uh, designation or to support this designation. This is also part of the heart of Williamsport uh, that uh, council has uh, approved a grant application uh, that, um, and we're currently in the process of, of uh, uh, getting interviews and preparing stories that is being done by the Greenway Partnership. So this is kind of a twofold uh, project. Uh, one really blends well with the other, and I'll just kind of leave it at that and let Jerry kind of expand on that briefly. So, <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Wells. How are you this evening? Thank you. Good evening, uh, members of council. Um, I'm here as a volunteer on the board of directors and, and chairman of the board of directors of the 22-county Susquehanna Greenway Partnership. And we have been embarking upon an initiative called Rivertown Revitalization in a number of communities. And what that program does is to enable us to go after funding at the state, and in some cases even the federal level, on behalf of that Rivertown 
and bring those resources along with efforts from, from uh, some of our folks uh, to bear in that town. Let me emphasize, there is no direct cost to the city of Williamsport to have this Rivertown designation. It will, in fact, enable us to bring in a $10,000 peer grant that's already been pre-approved by DCNR, but the paperwork is all pending, your action on the resolution. And it will bring technical support from our Susquehanna Greenway Partnership Project Coordinator, and it will also enable the Susquehanna Greenway Partnership to promote the city of Williamsport as a river town. Yeah, you I mean you already are along the river, so why the big deal? It's a designation that enables certain resources to be committed. That's, that's really the bottom line. Uh, we also can promote you on our Susquehanna Greenway Partnership website, our calendar of events, and our uh, newsletters. And our newsletters reach several thousand people. Um, so there is good uh, geographic coverage. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to have you meet the um, local board members, uh, two of them. Uh, Two, two had to be out of town that couldn't be here, but uh, I'd like to have you meet Susan Browning, who is um, an executive with Susquehanna Health System, um, and Jason Fitzgerald, who I think you might already know. <laughs> um, but those are two of our board members, um, and there are a number of other folks here that uh, understand this program and would be glad to share with you very briefly why they see value in it. Alice Trowbridge is uh, a registered landscape architect living in Lulsock and working for us under contract as a project coordinator. Trish Carruthers, let them know who you are. Trish Carruthers is our executive director. And uh, Corey Bevere just joined our staff. Um, and so those are three of our direct representatives here. <clears throat> so we have four principles embodied in this Rivertown designation. Number one is respect and work with the nature of the river, understanding the natural cycles of flooding and uh, all of what's involved with floodplain management, but the fact that it's also home to aquatic life and it's a dynamic living system. You might be aware that we um, worked with the Lycoming Audubon Society last year, and there's now photographed color panels of the eagles and falcons and other um, birds that can be spotted by people when they're walking the river walk, and that's gone over very well. We also are continually working to provide improved connections with the river not only the River Walk, but there will be other projects forthcoming out of this process. We try to involve people with the river, including entertainment, uh, stream cleanups, and, and just celebrating the river heritage. But underlying all of this is the objective of sustainable economic development for the communities that embrace the river and recognize it as an asset. Um, we would ask that two members of council and a member of the administration agree to serve on a Rivertown revitalization team, but, and also that you help us identify a variety of citizens in Williamsport who could be brought together as a team to help develop the various ideas and initiatives that might be worthy of undertaking in subsequent years. Um, we also uh, will make big, a big deal out of the fact that you have adopted a Rivertown um, philosophy when we go after grants, because that will serve as a positive. Um, <clears throat> we also will be in, uh, working to develop collaborative marketing 
with your visitors bureau and the visitors bureaus of say Lock Haven and Jersey Shore. Well, that's a subset of the Williamsport Lake Coming Chamber, but we'll be working to do collaborative marketing of the river towns. And the importance of that is that it will show to people considerable distance from here that there's multiple places that are of considerable value and interest and, and quality to come and visit. So they may turn into a, uh, instead of a, a pass through, a three or four or five day stay. That is economic value for our restaurants, our bed and breakfasts, our hotels, specialty retail shops and coffee shops and whatever. <clears throat> we will be specifically asking residents to point out things that they value and related to that, you are aware, I believe, that we got a private funding uh, grant from the, uh, through the Orton Family Foundation through, uh, administered by the Pennsylvania Humanities Council to um, do the so-called heart and soul engagement program. So our Heart of Williamsport program has been underway and um, I think that it's highly significant that we've already had a, a major number of folks give us feedback and I seem to have misplaced my sheet. Do you have one else? Why don't you report it because you can pop. Hi, and thank you very much. Uh, overall, we're, we're outreaching to people. We're doing inter individual interviews. We've done 22 to date where we've captured video and audio and done transcriptions. Asking people about their relationship with the city. What do they value most? How did they come to live here? How long have they been here? Uh, what are some things they'd like to see change? Uh, and we've, we've done online survey. We got 191 responses. And so far, uh, we gave you a copy of this. We call it a rack card. Just ask three simple questions. We have 414 of these logged already. Um, and we'll be collecting these throughout the summer. Um, the value of this is, um, at the end, what we're doing is entering all this data in as data. They're not just stories, but we're looking for what are the common themes, values, concerns, and where that becomes valuable um, it's going to be in the public domain, um, it's, you know, via our website. It's not just uh, for the city. It's not just for our organization that's doing this. But when you go, anybody goes to apply for grants relative to the city, if you can show that what you're going after has been, you know, reported by so many people as something that's of value to them, that's something you don't have to pay somebody to go out and do a survey for. You're already going to have that as a data bank. So we think there's going to be a lot of value moving forward with that. Um, one of the things we have heard that comes up repeatedly across, and one of the things we're trying to do, let me just step back, is reach the different demographics reflective of the city. And we're doing a lot of outreach to go into specific neighborhoods and, and demographic groups. And it, all across the board, what we're hearing is people love the fact that it's a city, but there's access to nature, whether it's through the parks and especially through the river walk and the scenic views to the mountains. So I think the idea of being a Susquehanna Greenway River town just goes hand in hand with that. Um, so again, yeah, I, so you know, 22 in-depth personal interviews, 191 online surveys, and 414 rack cards. And we'll be continuing that as we go through, um, but all that information is there. If you have any questions, feel free to call me at any time, uh, email me, and uh, Visit heartofwilliamsport.org, which has everything on there. It's transparent. We're putting up, you know, mini meeting minutes and agendas. And as we're gathering data, all of that information is being made public. Okay. I'd like to add, too, that uh, those inter uh, interviews that she spoke of are actually being videotaped by students from Lycoming College and, and documented. And Dr. Trochte committed, as we were applying for the grant, $10,000 of in-kind services from Lycoming College. So we hold a number of our meetings there, and they've been really helpful with uh, Robin Van Auken, and I don't think she made it here tonight, but my, in, in closing, I'd just like you to meet two other uh, types of uh, folks. Um, one is uh, I'd like you to meet um, Cliff and Varushika Stevens, who have a loft apartment and business 
in the pajama factory. And if we could take one minute, please come and tell them why you came here. Hello, it's nice to be here. We are in Williamsport uh, because of the pajama factory and the obvious revitalization that's happening here in Williamsport as a whole. You may um, wonder, well, how is it that we even heard about it? We were living in Philadelphia for about 15 years. We uh, uh, were staying in our cabin up in La Porte. We came down to Williamsport for a coffee. We ended up in Alabaster, fell in love with it, walked across the street, found the moon and raven, fell in love with that started Googling loft apartments, found the pajama factory, met Mark Winkleman, met amazing people in the pajama factory, like some of the folks, uh, folks seated back there, and just fell in love with the area. We picked up and moved out of Philadelphia. We lived in Center City, about three or four blocks from City Hall. Tell them what your business is. Um, our company is called Culture Spots. We've developed mobile web software technology that allows museums and galleries to provide their visitors with mobile audio tours on their smartphones without having to use any kind of a hardware device or put on any you know, nasty headphones, that kind of thing. They use their own smartphone. Uh, we have clients all across the country. We are untethered. That's the word that Jerry wanted me to uh, touch on tonight. We're untethered. We're in the creative economy. We're doing information technology development. It doesn't matter where we are. That is a benefit to Williamsport because someone from New York City, from Pittsburgh, from Philadelphia can pick up a move and establish roots here, take advantage of the beautiful nature you have here in Williamsport, the revitalization that's happening, and find a place like the Pajama Factory to call home. And it, it's an extraordinary place. We're very happy to be here, and thank you for this opportunity. Now, we need to not be prejudicial here. Exactly. Varushka is a systems engineer, but she's also an artist making excellent jewelry. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you so much for having us. Um, yes, we're technology people, but we are artists, artists as well. Uh, we've benefited from seeing what the arts can do in, in this case, in a big city like Philadelphia. So when we started to see the re uh, this aliveness in Williamsport, we knew this is happening here. So we are extremely excited to be here. It's another reason why we feel this town is very special because we understand, uh, we, are, we, we can see how people are embracing the arts. They are very much um, appreciative of their history, but they're also looking forward, which um, is very much aligned with our own values. Uh, we love the lifestyle. We love uh, the sense of community that we don't have in big cities, unfortunately, uh, and yet we have the, uh, the closeness to the big cities when needed for business like ours. So uh, just very blessed, and uh, well, thank you so much for having us. Um, Mr. Walls, before you move on to the last person, um, let me uh, just uh, publicly thank you uh, for opening your home uh, recently. Mr. Fitzgerald organized a tour that I was a part of um, with a representative from the governor uh, action team, I think it was, and uh, you opened your lovely loft uh, as part of the tour of the pajama factory that they were on. A little a pleasure to have you. Thank right. you so much for coming. Sure. Thank you. I'd like you also to meet Jim O'Connell, who is one of those geeks of the first order. <laughs> <laughs> That's an introduction. Uh, yeah. uh, my name is uh, Jim O'Connell. I'm also at the Pajama Factory, but unlike Cliff and Rushka, I grew up in this area. And I left in the early 80s. And um, Tell had them all the places you've been in the world. Oh, I, I went to uh, DC and then Boston and then DC. And then I lived in Tokyo for a dozen years. And um, family brought me back. Uh, my mother's getting older and uh, doing well. Um, and uh, I, I was not excited about coming back to Williamsport. Now, if you remember Williamsport in 1983, 84, when I left, it was a very different town. It pleased me to see what has happened to downtown, to Millionaire's Row, to the city, the culture, the shops. The, the downtown is alive and vibrant where, when I left, it was not. It was, this has become a very exciting place to live and compared to Tokyo, a very affordable place to live. Um, and so I've been back about five years. My brothers also moved back and we worked together. 
Tell them what your business is. Yes, it's uh, called GasNet. GasNet.io is our, our site. We are, uh, my brother and I are both longtime technologists, and we are applying what we do in technology to the natural gas industry, specifically gas monitoring. And um, we're not gas people. We saw a problem, met some people, and they discussed uh, their, uh, the issue of how they collect data. And, uh, you know, I spoke with my brother, and I said, there's, there's a better way to do it. You know, we, we can do this. Uh, why don't we monitor all the gas the way we monitor all the web servers? That's mature. That works very well. So we are um, formed a, a, a corporation, and we, we've been uh, um, working about a year, also at the Pajama Factory. Um, and it is uh, just a wonderful place to, to work now and uh, in the city to have uh, a five-minute drive to the countryside, to be surrounded by trees or or um, you know, a five-minute bike ride to the river. Uh, it's something that we probably take for granted, and it is just a, a remarkable, wonderful thing, and it makes staying in this area very appealing. Thank you. Sure. I think that uh, is sufficient at this point. Thank you, Mr. Wilson, and uh, we look forward to having this on our agenda in a couple of weeks uh, so that we can do our part in, in initiating some of these first steps to, to designate uh, Williamsport uh, officially as a river town. Mrs. Katz. I have to tell you something that happened today. There were two sets of people that walked into my store, and both of these people were doing um, all their, their trails up by uh, the Finger Lakes. Mm -hmm. And because it, our town looks so inviting, uh, for both of these two sets of people, one was from North Carolina and one was from Baltimore, and they stopped and they wanted to know what kind of trails that we have across the, around the river, and they wanted all sorts of information. And I just found it very interesting that people that were up in the Finger Lakes, two different sets, today. I mean, it was so unusual. Yeah. I sent them over to uh, the visitor center because I knew they had maps and other information right. on this. And uh, so here are two f different families that plan mm -hmm. on coming back because they're just uh, fascinated with what a beautiful town we have and what's available to us. To, and, uh, to underscore what you're saying, there's a little bed and breakfast, four bedrooms up on the Pine Creek Trail that doesn't do much advertising at all. And they listed for me, they have clients that have come from 25 different states and five nations. That kind of stuff puts us on the map. And I'd also like to thank Susan Browning. You were uh, instrumental in doing the Heart Walk. How many years ago was that? And uh, you measured that out, and, and it's still, people still use it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> Mr. Noviel. Uh, I just want to take a moment to thank Mr. Walls. Uh, I became aware of this designation some time back, and pretty much monthly over the last year or so, I've been bugging Jerry about <laughs> coming to, before us and giving us some type of... He came before our committee as well and gave us some insight there. Uh, I think approving this type of a designation is really a door opener for the city mm -hmm. uh, it, it, to a number of opportunities that will allow the city to become... Uh, to play a bit more of a formidable role in creating its own future. I think that's a big element of this in the long run here. Uh, the designation ties into the history of the area very well, mm -hmm. as we've already heard. Uh, certainly ties into some of our already current offerings, such as the walkway, the bike path, and some other things we'll be developing down the line as well. Uh, as you already mentioned, broader marketing opportunities mm -hmm. for a number of, of individuals, businesses, and mm -hmm. such in the area at the same time. Um, which opens up, again, the, the opportunity for enhancement of our tourism capacity. Um, the city itself, I think, will ultimately become a destination mm -hmm. community at a certain point yes. with regard to this. Mm -hmm. It also, fortunately for us, I think, ties into a number of projects we're already working on. The East Gateway project, uh, like Homing's involvement, already mm -hmm. being expressed in, in, with regard to what <clears> they have in mind to do. Uh, also, uh, in the long run, I've also found over the, the years I've been on council that, that many of the grant providers that we seek grants from are really tied into a lot of connectivity types of projects. I think this mm -hmm. defines that in many ways. 
so it opens up those opportunities for financial assistance in the long run at the same time. Uh, I hope I haven't bugged you too much, Jerry. I know no. we've been after this for a long time. <laughs> uh, I really do appreciate the effort. And, and again, thanks to all those who came forward tonight, uh, and uh, particularly those who've already been deeply involved for a number of years. And I'm hoping that uh, uh, this is an opportunity for you know, the city to really take a, a major step forward with this. And uh, so thank you. You're thanks welcome. to those in the heart of Williamsport and, and as well. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Allison. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone who uh, came and, and gave personal testimonies tonight <clears throat> about the city because uh, I, I think a lot of us have, have felt the same thing and seen the same thing, but it's nice to hear confirmation of that and, and an objective point of view from the outside. Um, I, I'm really excited about the fact that uh, so many of these things that are going on are not, they're not uh, originated in government. They're grassroots things that are coming up. And then that gives us the chance to, as government, to facilitate, help facilitate uh, those activities to, you know, do whatever we can to support them. I think that's the sign of life, you know, that, that is evolving in this community. And, um, um, yeah, I have a vested interest in the pajama factory. My wife has a, a shop there. And I think it's just a, it's an exciting place, um, an exciting concept that, um, uh, like Mr. O'Connell said, uh, who would have ever thought that would happen in Williamsport, Pennsylvania? Uh, I mean, I, I was born and raised here. But um, we see so much, and I think what uh, we as city government are trying to do is uh, we're looking at things like this that are going on now, but we're trying to look ahead to see, you know, what can we do now to uh, prepare for things five or ten years down the road when, you know, many of us won't be here on council or, or uh, involved directly this way, but what kind of legacy can we leave um, for future councils and, uh, in effect, the positive things that are going on in the city. So thanks to all of you. Um, it's uh, going to pay, I think, enormous dividends down the road um, for our community and, and the whole area because we're all linked together. Thanks. Um, thank you. A um, couple thoughts of my own. First, um, I believe Ms. Maroney in the paper this morning said that much of our agenda tonight is um, housekeeping in nature, um, kind of routine kinds of things. So. Uh, if Mr. Maroney will uh, uh, indulge me here a second, I think um, those two testimonials might be uh, make for a good lead story in the absence of anything else that might be interesting tonight. Um, the, uh, the other thing I, I would say is, you know, we, we've got, as Mr. Noviello, I think it was said, um, a variety of projects that are going on in the city, some uh, initiated by city government, some by others, um, that I think will uh, benefit from uh, this designation, this partnership uh, with Susquehanna Greenway Partnership. Um, and uh, two of them, uh, one of them I think is obvious that was, is already mentioned um, that I was talking to Mr. Walls about uh, recently, um, adding yet more connections between the city and, and the Riverwalk um, uh, as part of the East Third uh, Gateway uh, project. Uh, many people like the idea of a Basin Street connection, um, and so I know that's part of the plans. And one that I'm always afraid is going to slide into Neverland and people will forget about actually came from students at the high school. Um, I've, this was under a project, I believe, led by um, uh, uh, the county planners, uh, Rochelle Abbott, now probably at the time. Uh, no, no, no. This was uh, the visioning plan mm -hmm. for the area, basically. Uh, quarter plan. The quarter plan. That was it. Um, and there was an idea that the high school students came up with that I've always loved that I think uh, Susquehanna Greenwich Partnership could help push forward. And that was uh, an, a, a, what, a, a park that is not highly developed. I, there's a term for that. Um, a kind of a low impact park that would occur in the bend of um, Lycoming Creek um, uh, between 3rd and 4th. 
uh, adjacent to the, the fire training facility um, with the idea that you could have an, uh, uh, a, um, a boat ramp there for not big boats but for kayaks and canoes. And so that kind of low impact uh, floodplain park um, would be another asset for a way for us to connect uh, with our river system in a way that uh, th the levees and the highways have made difficult. And so um, we all appreciate having those some days, but when we're wanting to connect to the river, it's, diff it's hard. And so I just wanted to throw that project back into people's mind because I remember the high school kids coming up with that, and who knows, they may be in graduate school by now, but um, uh, you know, government moves slowly, and, and if we have some allies to help us with it, maybe it can someday come to fruition. Thank you. Um, and uh, we'll probably see at least some of you in a couple of weeks uh, when we uh, hear the uh, approve, assuming we do approve the resolution. If you could send an, it, yeah, if you'll send an email um, about two things to the city clerk, uh, Ms. Frank, one about that and one about if uh, I think you had wanted a couple members of a, uh, a board uh, from council. If you'll remind us of, of those two requests through Mrs. Frank, uh, then we'll get that and, and get to work on it. Um, all right. Thank you again very much, and, and you're welcome to stay, of course, uh, for our, what was the term again, Mark? Housekeeping agenda? No. <laughs> um, the next item on the agenda, then, is uh, some housekeeping, uh, apparently. <laughs> Uh, we have a, a variety of appointments and reappointments. I think the best way to do this is probably by group. Um, is Mr. Smith, is that usually how we do this? Um, and so the first group is uh, reappointments to the Shade Tree Commission. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Dr. President, Mr. Vice President, members of City Council. Before you, I have some individuals that I'm advocating to be reappointed to the Shade Tree Commission, and with your help, we can do so. Thank you. All right, can I have a motion and a second to approve uh, it's David Myers, Thad Meckley, and Cindy Cobb for reappointment? So move. Second. With a motion and a second, uh, any comments or questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Frank on the reappointment. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes. And those appointments were approved. Next, uh, we have Brandon Park Commission. Thank you, Mr. President. Actually, Dr. President of City Council. Before you, I have an individual, Thad Meckley, that I'd like to have reappointed to the Brandon Park Commission. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion and a second to approve uh, that reappointment? So move. Second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, Mrs. Frank? Ms. Mealy? Yes. Mr. Noviello? Yes. Mrs. Katz? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Allison? Yes. Dr. Williamson? Uh, yes, uh, and that is also approved. Um, the next I, uh, appointments and reappointments, um, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, is it possible we can do all of these together and let me explain why we might want to? Um, yes, okay. Um, so these are all, uh, the council may recall over the last couple months, we've uh, amended a couple different times the ordinance establishing the East Third uh, Street Gateway Advisory Revitalization Commission. I think that's the tortured mm -hmm. name we currently have for it. Um, and uh, I told you at the time that I would be working with the mayor um, uh, to figure out how to get everybody that we all intended to be on the commission on the commission. Um, I did that by not ha bugging him about it. I did it through Mr. Grado, and, and, and I'm told the uh, mayor approved. 
uh, of the process. Um, we could have, had we chosen, um, simply appointed the new people that were on the advisory committee, but not on the commission. Uh, to make it a little bit cleaner for the record, um, we decided to appoint and reappoint everyone with new terms um, and the ordinance sets them up, half of them five-year terms and half of them three-year terms. There are eight appointments between council and the mayor, um, four each, three, two, three-year, five-year, et cetera. And then there are four people that will have uh, positions on the commission by uh, by their office. The mayor, his designee, uh, a member of council's ERC, uh, the president or, or designee of uh, Lycoming College, and uh, commissioner, uh, county commissioner or designee. And so we won't be appointing them because there's no need, um, but the other eight um, we can take as a group. Uh, Mayor, would you like to add anything? As Marlene Whaley would say, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can I have a motion and a second to uh, appoint and or reappoint as it, uh, respectively, uh, Pat Marty, Vincent DeSalvo, John Albarano, Al Claps, Neil Casale, Lou Mealy, Pete Sides, and Casey Stopper um, to the commission. So moved. Second. Hear a motion and a second. Comments or questions? Just very quickly. Yeah, Mr. Novia. I'm happy just to have these same people want to step up and continue their, yeah. the process here. Uh, it's an advantage for us in the long run here to have people that are already in tune with what's been going on up to this point in time. And so it doesn't back us up, it doesn't slow us down, it actually moves us forward. So I, I appreciate all these appointments, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and I agree with that. I also would note that the timing is probably pretty good because I think um, we'll have the official reviews of mm -hmm. the the traffic study here in the near future, um, and it's good time to have them fully in place as a group to be able to be part of that process. Um, I'll also um, ask or note, I think we already talked about this, Mrs. Frank, you will, um, uh, question, this is a question, will you send uh, letters or emails to each of the four uh, members who have it by office to make sure that they know that they're uh, on the board and to, they should designate someone? I already have. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, if there are no other f comments or questions, then Ms. Frank on the uh, appointment slash reappointments. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Ms. Ginoviello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williams. Yes, and those appointments are approved. Uh, the next group is uh, appoint an appointment and a reappointment uh, to HARB. Uh, of course, we all know uh, uh, Tony Visco, um, who's uh, long been a member of HARB. Um, we also have a vacancy um, that uh, uh, James Cresco would like to fill. Uh, James is actually the, the business partner of uh, John Core, who uh, has resigned from the board. And so uh, sharing the similar perspective on historic buildings and, and expertise on those subjects, um, I uh, felt like uh, that might be a good replacement. Um, can I have a motion and a second on those two appointments? So, second. Uh, with a motion and a second, any comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, Mrs. Frank. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes. And uh, that is uh, also approved. Next uh, f and final appointment is uh, as alternate to the Zoning Hearing Board. Um, I've, uh, Mr. Nara isn't here this evening, but uh, he and I have spoken about the need to make sure that we have alternates uh, in place for the board because there's a fairly steep learning curve uh, there and so uh, when Mr. Slaughter approached me about uh, being interested in getting involved in, mm -hmm. in Williamsport, um, I thought that that might be a, a good way to um, start learning about how uh, things happened. He's a teacher at the high school um, and uh, uh, an emerging young uh, community leader. And so um, mm -hmm. uh, with your approval, uh, I'd ask for his appointment as well. Uh, can I have a motion and a second on Mr. Slaughter? So moved. Second. Hearing a motion and a second. Comments or questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Frank. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. And Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes, and uh, that appointment is also approved. Um, now we move on to the uh, next item on the agenda, which is an ordinance to amend and or close and or transfer a quite a bit of money around. 
Um, I'm assuming, uh, Mr. Grado, that you'll be able to explain what everything between 7 and 17 is all at once? <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, uh, Mrs. Frank in, do we have to read all the titles? The first one in short form, please. An ordinance amend and close 2005 home budget. Uh, can I have a motion and a second to approve that ordinance? So moved. Second. second. Mr. Credo, how uh, are you? Uh, good evening, uh, President Williamson, members of council. Um, yes, I'll speak to all of the uh, budget uh, amendments or transfers. Uh, this is for the home uh, program. Uh, as you mentioned, it's housekeeping, but um, in community development, we've and in home, uh, many of our projects are open at multiple years. Um, and um, what we're doing this evening is closing out years 2005 through 2010. Um, the uh, adjusting the uh, actual entitlement plus the program income received for those projects in those years. Um, and then the majority of the funds is moving into the 2012 uh, year which is uh, provides for the home funds that were set aside or actually paid to under the Memorial Homes project so that's the largest uh, one that was the three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar home funds that we provided to do the 40 unit uh, housing development uh, on the Brodart site um, the other uh, ones through uh, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, we are just uh, providing the actual program income received uh, during those years and uh, providing for the actual uh, federal entitlement. Um, this was reviewed by the uh, uh, Finance Committee on Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ms. Mealy from Finance. This was reviewed by the Finance Committee and it is. Um a bunch of pretty dense housekeeping uh, discussion more or less centered around, um, you know, which funds were moving to which years and exactly how we could possibly have so many years of home funding open at one time. Um, but uh, um, as, uh, as Mr. Grado and Mrs. Robinson explained, we, um, we do still have projects that or had projects until recently that were occurring in all of those years of home funding, which is how we still had um, everything open back to 2005. I think it was things like home um, grants yeah. for home projects. Yeah. And These are owner-occupied single-family rehab uh, mm -hmm. projects, uh, as well as the um, home buyer program. Uh, many of that is the program mm -hmm. delivery costs uh, toward those projects. Um, the um, uh, 2005 through 2010, there's not been much, act there hasn't been much activity. We should have closed much of that out sooner. Um, typically, we have about six years open and we try to close out three uh, in the, uh, uh, so that we have at least three to four years open. HUD, um, now has changed. We, it's like the first in. We spend our program income initially, so you're spending it from years that you have projects attained in. Um, but they, uh, right now, as we're going through what they call it in our IDIS system, they have their, their own accounting system for the funds that are allocated each year. Um, and we have to match that up with the city's finance system. Uh, which is really generally from year to year, and it gets closed out mid-year the following year, so, but we have open projects. Uh, so you won't see uh, this many years open uh, in the future. I think in community development, uh, we have 2011, 2012 is what's open now uh, for projects that are multi-year. Uh, in home, you'll see that uh, about the same. We. We still haven't received our allocation for 2016, but we're spending uh, funds on those activities. So uh, uh, we have been receiving less uh, funds each year. If you look uh, from 
those prior years we've been receiving the federal entitlement has ranged from 380,000. We're down to about 200,000 now. We, we do get program income. Uh, our mortgage assistance is usually is 30 year, uh, but it's deferred for 30 years. There are some that come up and as they sell uh, homes, uh, those mortgages still uh, come due and we do get, and that's where we receive our program income. Uh, another side note, we have been working with the county on fair funds uh, doing the rental assistance uh, program that uh, Carl Mazur and Mary Rosinski from our office, they do that. So we, we are subs uh, getting some additional grant funds to kind of uh, uh, take uh, the, those loss of funds from the federal government. So, uh, uh, you know, it's an important activity that we do for housing rehabilitation assistance and, uh, you know, it's something that we're going to have to look toward uh, to try to uh, fund in the future in different ways, actually. So, sorry, I got off the track there. No, <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Um, uh, yeah, John raises an excellent point. It's it's a service that we can't really afford in many ways to stop providing to the community um, simultaneously. The funds to provide it are shrinking, so the city will eventually perhaps have to look for a new avenue to continue. And we have been able to supplement in many ways with the fair funds in the Brodart neighborhood, allowing us to continue with some of the same activities without um, the same federal share. But um, of those projects that we're looking five years out on, Randy, <laughs> that might be one of them trying to figure out what our, what our next mm -hmm. housing projects within the community are so that we can continue to provide affordable housing, ideally um, pathways to home ownership for mm -hmm. individuals within the community, um, even if we no longer have the, the federal funding to, to do that. Right. Um, anyway, aside from that, uh, finance passed, it passed all 11 of these to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. In a marathon of, I make a motion and I second, um, that probably was totally unnecessary, but we didn't have Jay David there to tell us one way or the other, so we did it. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to do it again. Um, <laughs> can you do them all at once? From 2005, yeah. Okay, um, we'll need to amend the original motion to get there. Um, uh, any other comments or questions on any of the 11 ordinances? Uh, hearing none, uh, I don't know who made the motion or second. Nope, there was no motion made. Oh, I thought we did, okay. Can I have a motion and a second to approve uh, the ordinance to amend and close 2015 all the way down to ordinance to amend 2015 home budget? all 11 of those ordinance uh, in first reading. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, from uh, all of them included from the beginning 2005 to 2015 uh, that say either amend and close or amend or amend and transfer. Can I have a motion? So move. Second. Hearing a motion and a second. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, Mrs. Frank on all 11 ordinances in first reading. Ms. Mealy. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nubiella. Ditto. <laughs> Mrs. Katz. This was a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes, and, and all of them are approved in first reading. I can remember. Uh, sitting out there uh, one time, one of the first meetings I ever sat in on, and and people went bang, 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 through a bunch of Mr. Grado's ordinances to close or amend or something. I was like, wow, that's what council is about? That's interesting. <laughs> it's so, like synchronized swimming without the appeal. <laughs> <laughs> Since I've never found the appeal, or, <laughs> that must be really bad. Um, all right, so uh, the next item on the agenda, if I can move all the way down there, um, is a resolution, agreeing, uh, resolution for agreement with Ballard Spar LLC for labor and employment legal services. Mrs. Frank, please. Resolution amendment 
with, I'm sorry, resolution agreement with Ballard Spar LLC for labor and employ employment legal services for the city of Williamsport. Be it hereby resolved by the city council of the city of Williamsport that the agreement attached here to by and between the city of Williamsport and Ballard Spar is hereby approved and the appropriate city officials are hereby authorized to execute the agreement. Be it further resolved that the services provided will be utilized on as needed basis as determined by the administration in conjunction with the assistant city solicitor to support the city and or represent the city in grievances, arbitrations, negotiations, and other labor and employment related matters in the amount not to exceed $60,000. Be it further resolved that the City Council will be informed as to the services needed by Ballard Spar LLC and be briefed as to the progress made in each as needed service during executive session meetings to follow regularly scheduled City Council meetings. Thank you. And can I have a motion and a second to approve that resolution? So move. Second. Very motion and second. Uh, Mr. Nichols, how are you? Fine, thank you. And good evening, um, President Williamson, Vice President Allison, members of council. Uh, the resolution before you um, is to extend an agreement with Ballard Spar LLC for labor and employment legal services uh, for the city through the end of 2016. Uh, the amount being recommended uh, for said services is $60,000 as stated in the resolution and is budgeted in the uh, hearings and litigation uh, account line item in the uh, mayor's uh, uh, budget. Um, Ballard Spar has uh, continued to do a good job for the city, so we are recommending that uh, you approve this resolution. So um, there are some bills that we need to, uh, that are at hand that we need to, to pay, so um, that certainly will help with passing this resolution. And we have some upcoming issues that will require serious uh, uh, services from Ballard Spar, and uh, like I said, they continue to do a good job and work with our solicitors as needed. So it was reviewed by finance, so I'll defer back to the chair. Thank you very much, Ms. Mealy from finance. Uh, finance did review this and for the full body of counsel with a positive recommendation. Um, the discussion uh, about this particular item um, dealt well, firstly, I suppose, with the, the fact that um, one, one might think, given that we are just, just authorizing this spending tonight, that we had not accrued any spending with Ballard's Bar thus far this year. In fact, we have already racked up $25,782.40 worth of outstanding um, fees from Ballard's Bar. Uh, and what that would seem to indicate is that $60,000 is the beginning um, not by any stretch the end of the authorizations for Ballard Spar in this calendar year. Um, that $25,000 actually only gets us through the end of April. Um, May bills have not yet been uh, not yet. So, uh, um, With that in mind, this is obviously a firm um, that we're utilizing heavily. They have performed very well for the city in the past um, several years. Um, and we've been, my understanding from the administration and from my own limited experience with them is that we're very satisfied with their services. Uh, it does, however, um, it is, however, worth noting that $60,000 is what we had set aside in the budget for Ballard's mm -hmm. Bar expenditures this year. Consequently, um, we will be needing to uh, make a good effort on the part of the administration to rein in our spending with them pending uh, the uh, pending moving into negotiations over the police contract, which are primarily what we were hoping to be using Ballard's Bar for in this calendar year. Um, uh, so that, that was, I think, the bulk of the discussion um, is, is more or less whether or not uh, how much money the city can, can allot to this particular expenditure and how we can try to curb our spending so that we don't wind up going vastly over our $60,000 mark by the end of uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. If I've missed anything, I will defer to the other members of finance because I suspect that I have. <laughs> recommendation. Pardon me? Recommendation. Oh, I, I actually said that. First. You said I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, positive recommendation. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions from members of council? Ms. Katz. What we wanted to do when we dis with the discussion is to make sure that um, what's being, uh, when Ballard Spar is contacted, 
why our own city solicitors aren't contacted first. We wanted to make sure that there's some kind of reference here or um, some kind of uh, frame that this is not, that they are not used to what seems to an extreme at this point. I mean, $25,000 is a lot in such a short period of time. And uh, I guess we're, we're begging the administration at this point to put a stop on anybody calling Ballard Spar. I appreciate you stating that it is uh, now policy that phone calls will not be made unless I'm aware of those calls, and those calls will be made in my office. That's what we were looking for. We, we wanted mm -hmm. to make sure because some of these phone calls probably uh, were not necessary to go through Ballard Spar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Any other comments or questions? That's good. Uh, that is good, and, and I know that was something that you had talked to council about um, recently, and, and I appreciate, Mayor, that uh, you enacting that policy as a cost-saving measure. And I'm also glad to see in the resolution that you sent that those uh, determinations will be made uh, in conjunction with our uh, assistant city solicitor has some expertise uh, in the area, and, and so we can decide uh, what are the, the large, complex kinds of issues that go beyond um, the meager uh, amounts that uh, we pay our uh, solicitors internally um, and really rise to uh, complicated uh, uh, things that uh, require a, maybe an entire office who de is devoted to those kinds of um, topics. So um, I thank you for that, Mr. Mayor. Um, hearing no other comments or questions, Ms. Frank, on uh, the resolution. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes. And uh, that resolution is approved. Next item on the agenda is a resolution for a contract between the City of Williamsport and Chief David Young. Uh, Mrs. Frank, please. A resolution agreement between the City of Williamsport and Chief David Young. Be it hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Williamsport that the agreement attached here to and between the City of Williamsport and the Chief of Police David Young is hereby approved, and the appropriate city officials are hereby authorized to execute the agreement. Thank you. May I have a motion and a second on the resolution? I'll move. Second. second. Very motion and a second, Mr. Mayor. Hello again. How are you? Great, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to publicly thank City Council in regards and working with me in regards to this agreement with Chief Young. Uh, this is the first time this has ever occurred because this is the first time that the Chief of Police was hired outside the ranks. The purpose of this resolution is to give Chief Young a little bit more security since he cannot go in back into the ranks, since he did not come from the ranks. And there's three points that I'd like to talk about briefly. First of all, compensation. The compensation is $87,500, no health benefits. Number two, in regards to the benefits, uh, he will have similar benefits such as paid vacation, sick days, et cetera. And then the third point I'd like to talk about is the duties and responsibilities. I did give city council a list of responsibilities in regards to his job description. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, this resolution was not uh, reviewed by a, a committee um, because of uh, the discussions that the mayor referred to with all members of, of council. So uh, let me just open it up to comments or questions. Mr. Nobia. I just I had occasion to sit in on the, on the last, I believe the last occurrence of that. And uh, it seemed to me, at least to, to my satisfaction, that we worked out uh, all the points that were necessary to, of a concern to the, uh, uh, to the chief. Um, again, in my way of looking at it, he was very satisfied with the ultimate results, and as such, I think we were equally as satisfied. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to see this come to fruition finally and give him some satisfaction in that little edge of security that he was seeking in the long run. So I thank the mayor for uh, getting council involved in that. Uh, it was very helpful in the long run and opened the doors for more such types of discussions down the line. And believe me, city council is going to be involved in other activities as well. So uh, I think we have a good relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Frank, on the resolution. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Nubiello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williams. Yes, and that resolution is approved. Next item on the agenda is resolution to amend the City of Williamsport PA 457 Deferred Compensation Plan. Uh, Mrs. Frank. 
Resolution to approve an amendment to the City of Williamsport at uh, PA 457 Deferred Compensation Plan. Be it hereby resolved by the City Council of the City of Williamsport that the City Council has previously approved and adopted the City of Williamsport PA 457 de Deferred Compensation Plan to provide employees of the City with retirement benefits. Be it further resolved that the City Council does hereby declare the intention of of the city to continue the plan, but reserves the right to terminate or attend the plan at any time. Be it further resolved that the mayor and city controller are authorized to take such actions to execute the amended plan document and participant loan program to carry out the intent of the foregoing resolution and require under the plan to make the plan fully effective in accordance with its terms and intent. Thank you. Can I have a motion and a second on the resolution? Second. second. Motion second, Mr. Nichols. Thank you again. Uh, this resolution is to approve the city's 457 deferred compensation plan document as amended, which will bring it into full compliance with the uh, current IRS code, and it also adds an allowable loan option. As stated in the um, uh, memo from Joe, the loan option we selected is mostly driven by the IRS code and allows for a participant to borrow up to a maximum of $50,000 or 50% 50 of their fund balance in a given year, whichever is lower. And then the payback can be made up to five years with interest um, at the current prime rate. So in other words, they're paying interest in the cells, but that's what is required of the IRS uh, statute. The uh, 457 Deferred Compensation Plan is available to all city employees through uh, payroll deduction and uh, obviously does not involve any city funds. This is a personal choice, a personal option if someone wants to participate in the supplementary retirement uh, fund that we offer to our employees as an option. Uh, this plan has been in effect for 20, 25 years um, and with right now it's uh, went st started out with uh, Nationwide, then went to Hartford, and now as we're with Mass Mutual uh, as our current plan administrator, and Wells Fargo is the broker of record, and also serves as a financial advisor for any employees that are enrolled in the, the plan that would like any kind of advice as to which mutual funds they want to uh, uh, put money into. Uh, this was reviewed by finance, and uh, again, I'll defer back to the chair for any questions. Thank you. Ms. Mealy, finance? Uh, finance did review this and forwarded the full body of counsel with a positive recommendation. Um, most of this matter is, as Mr. Maroney would say, uh, just more housekeeping. Um, it, we're, we're just bringing ourselves into compliance with current regulations. Um, the one exception to that is the loan option, um, which is actually a, a pretty nice option to be able to offer in what Mr. Nichols assures us is a cost neutral setting. Um, that is to say, if you have um, any amount of money, frankly, accrued in your 457 account, you can borrow up to 50% of it or $50,000, whichever is uh, less. And um, meaning, of course, that there's no fiscal risk to the city because the person is borrowing their mm -hmm. own money in their own account. Right. Um, and uh, and then you have a certain number of years to pay it back. Uh, the person who is borrowing their own money loses nothing as well because while they are paying interest on the loan, they are paying it to themselves. Mm -hmm. um, why this is the case is a little <laughs> unclear, but as long as it works that way, it works out well. Um, that, that is to say, it's, it's a no-loss option for anyone, and, uh, and especially in times when finding a little bit of uh, extra financing for a, um, a down payment on a home or something mm -hmm. like that might be hard to come by. It's, it's, a, it's a good option. Um, aside from that, um, as I said, we forwarded it with positive recommendation. Thank you. Just a, uh, comment. Comment. Yeah, yes. just, just a comment what um, Councilwoman uh, Mealy said that the interest being paid is uh, when the loan is paid back, it's uh, post-tax. So it's, it's, it's the money Thank you. Uh, is paid in your federal income requirement is taken out of those funds. You know, the contribution part of it, though, is pre-tax. So, <laughs> so when you pay it back, it's post-tax, and the interest ensures that the government is getting their additional federal money from the interest, you mm -hmm. know, that, uh, you know, that that money is not going somewhere else. It's going into the fund post-tax, and the federal government is getting more federal income tax because of that requirement. So um, 
But again, up to five years, you have to pay it back, and uh, and it can be used pr pretty much for anything, but it is restricted. It must be paid back by within five years or less. Yeah, I guess that's true. It can't, it can't be a residential sort of loan. The, the five-year cap means that it's not, right. say, something So it's not pay. suitable for, yeah, like a real estate or buying a house or something like that, unless you want to borrow a down payment, you know, over a five-year time frame, then that would work out pretty well for the employee. All right. Uh, other comments or questions? Just Mr. Ellison? To reiterate again, just so there's no confusion at all in the public, this, this is not something the city participates in. It's a vehicle for the city employees to save their own money. So we don't have any costs associated with it. I guess it's the public counterpart of the private. Of a 401, 401. Uh, you know, account that in the yeah. private sector. And just, you know, the question may be, well, okay, so there's a loan and the person leaves the employee of the city, doesn't pay back the loan, there's no more payroll deduction, and for some reason just stops paying it, then what happens is that individual would get a 1099 for the amount that they had withdrawn as a loan and did not pay back, and so that becomes taxable with a penalty. To the individual, not the city, obviously. All right. Uh, hearing no other comments or questions, Ms. Frank on the resolution. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Uh, Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes. Uh, and that resolution is approved. Uh, next item Thank on you. the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is certificates of appropriateness. We're going to break these into two groups. Um, the first one, um, uh, I'm going to need to get some guidance on Mr. Smith. Uh, uh, I've just read uh, through the minutes. Um, and it's an item that's uh, recommended for rejection, but I think there's an expectation um, that uh, there'll be another review by HARB um, before, uh, um, at their next meeting. Um, so should we reject it and then treat it as a new the next time, assuming we support their Okay, thank you. Assuming we support uh, uh, Harp's recommendation. Um, so we'll take item two first, uh, which uh, involved a sign uh, at 761 uh, West 4th Street. Uh, and the way we always do rejections is we make a motion to approve the rejection so that a yes vote is a vote to support Harp's recommendation to reject. Um, so can I have a motion uh, to approve the rejection? So moved. Second. Uh, with a motion and a second, any comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, Mrs. Frank on item number two. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Uh, yes, and uh, that uh, recommendation is approved to reject uh, the certificate of appropriateness. Uh, the next three items, um, first uh, is for 528-530 West 3rd Street involving uh, some uh, removing and repairing of various parts of the uh, building and to keep an old tradition going on, we're uh, gonna talk about the colors, the Homestead Resort Cream, which I bet is beautiful. Uh, it will be painted uh, uh, at 946 Vine Avenue. We're uh, repairing fire damage at 942 Vine Avenue. The owner is doing asphalt siding uh, and- uh, Removing asphalt siding. I'm smart, I'm sorry. <laughs> Removing asphalt siding, um, r repairing uh, wood siding, um, and installing new gutters um, with the boring color of brown. Um, and so on those three items, kind of a motion and a second to approve uh, Harp's recommendation to issue the certificates of appropriateness. So moved. Second. second. The motion and a second. Comments or questions, members of council? Hearing none, Mrs. Frank? Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes. And uh, those uh, certificates are approved. Next item on the agenda is except for filing. Uh, we have uh, recreation committee meetings of 
uh, May 23rd, 2016. Can I have a motion and a second to accept that for filing? So move. Second. Hear your motion and a second. Comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, Mrs. Frank? Ms. Mealy? Yes. Ms. Junoviello? Yes. Mrs. Katz? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Yes. Mr. Allison? Yes. Dr. Williamson? Uh, yes, and that uh, is accepted for filing. Next item is announcements. Uh, City Council will be holding an executive session immediately following uh, uh, the, uh, this meeting uh, for a purpose of litigation. Um, the next regularly scheduled City Council meeting will be held on Thursday, July 7th at 7.30 in City Hall Council Chambers. Other upcoming meetings include on Monday, June 27th at noon, the Planning Commission meeting and uh, at 4, Recreation Commission. On Monday, July 4th, uh, City Hall will be closed to celebrate. Um, on Tuesday, July 5th uh, at noon, we have the Public Safety meeting. Uh, at 1, the Public Works Committee meeting. And at 3.30, uh, Finance Committee meeting. Um, and that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, do I have any comments uh, by members of council? Mr. Ellis. I just have one. Um, two council meetings ago, we approved a demolition on Hebron Street, if you remember that uh, yes. older house. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you've driven by there and seen the finished product now that the, the house has been torn down, um, it, it's not only seated, but there's a couple trees planted there. And, and you can see that once that becomes a, a fully green place, um, it, I think it's really going to add to that neighborhood, especially in juxtaposition with the, um, the brick alley that comes by it there. Um, it, it's going to uh, present a nice visual or bring a nice visual presentation uh, to that area. and. Uh, I think it's going to be an improvement, uh, definitely. The residence just above it has been redone and looks very, yeah. very and that looks nice. Yeah, fits very fitting for what they yeah. did there. Yeah, yeah. The, the setback is a uh, nice, nice look. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, right. Is that yeah. lot owned by the house behind it now? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Is that it was those um, two ladies who came into for the demo? Yeah. Okay. Great. And they own a number of properties they in the neighborhood. Oh, wonderful. Great. Other comments? Ms. Katz? On July 1st is First Friday. First Friday, we have a lot going on downtown. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, uh, we have patriotic music, we have soul music going on, and uh, Mayor, isn't this also a lot of celebrations that weekend for the 150th? Yes. I'll let you take over. We will, a, we will have Dorothy Dietrich from the Houdini Museum in Scranton. She's classified as the world's famous women's magician, the female Houdini, and she will be performing that night. And from my understanding, Bill Nichols may be participating with her. So hopefully she won't have him disappear. Thank you. He what do we do if she cuts him in half? Just, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, he often performs magic of his own. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to disappear all the Rackby fun day. Yeah. <laughs> I was also uh, going to say it might be a nice visceral uh, presentation earlier in, for the neighborhood. I, yeah. I like that term, too. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Katz, And also July 4th celebration downtown with all sorts of things going on. So I think the weekend of the 4th coming up is going to be exciting and a lot of fun. And I hope everybody comes down and participates. Mm -hmm. Great. Actually, Jonathan. If I can say one other thing then about um, the, the whole first weekend in July, uh, there is a website. Um, I believe it's www.williamsport150.org um, that does list a number of different events the city is organizing uh, for that date. Um, just to get that in front of the cameras would be helpful. Thank you. Great. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Mayor, anything from your, your administration? Else. All right, great. Uh, general public? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.